Okay. Um, hopefully that's coming through. Uh, so yeah, we're finally back at uh, more interesting content. Um, updates and whatnot. Uh, I wanted to go over just this one first before I went into the, the summary of the thing from yesterday. Again, uh, my videos come out a little later because I'm just going to like, I'm not just going to sit there and wait for like the one hour uh, live stream thing because I just, it's not my thing. Um, so I wanted to go over this unit real quick and talk about what's going on with Aiden. Because uh, the original Aiden, the green one, is not very useful. I mean, she's not bad, but like... Are they going to change this one in any way to like, or is it just going to be the same thing but fire? And I think the second, I think the S2, the fact that it's not a, oh, I hate this guy, um, the fact that it's not a, a skill and it is a passive suggests something. Um, again, she's a three star, so her stats are kind of limited, but I like the, the attack is decent for a three star. Um, Again, usually when it comes to three stars, what's valuable in them is utility because like their stats aren't high enough to do anything, right? Um, so if you think of, if you got to take a look at the, like some of the better three stars, um, like Flurry came out and she was pretty good, but not not because she had good stats, right? Her stats were irrelevant. It was just that her kit uh, gave her a bunch of advantages that made her like useful to the team. Um, some are different. So if you take something like Raz, like his kit, it doesn't really matter what Raz does, right? He gives a he gives a defense buff, and that has that's nothing to do with his kit. He gives or that has nothing to do with his stats, right? He gives um, he has a dual attack built in, which again has nothing to do with his own stats, right? Um, you know, stuff like that. So like, who else is a good three star that's like out there? I can't think of any right now for some reason. Montmorency, right, is another good example of like she's good partially, but not because of her stats. It's more because of other stuff, right? Where, you know, better units later on, you know, like five stars and all that stuff, it's like they're good, they've got good kits and they've got good stats to back it up. So they can do both utility and, you know, damage or tanking and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so keep in mind, like, kind of, kind of, why is this in French? I don't know. Keep in mind, like, you know, what makes, like, a good three star unit is, is usually just their, like, their kit and the utility they bring. Um, okay, so the, we're not doing the S2. Usually they go into S2, which is kind of weird, um, but we're going into S3 here. Attacks the enemy repeatedly, decreasing speed of the target. Okay, so this is a single target and a defense break. Um, that's all right. It doesn't really, it doesn't uh, strip. It doesn't strip, so, you know, it, you know <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, when a fire ally attacks, penetrates defense by you. Well, that's kind of interesting. Um, you basically just give everybody a free um, pen set. All your fire units are free pen set. Um, I like... I kind of like this, like, in terms of... It's not like... it's not You're not forced to run all fire team, but if you're running her in one more fire unit, well, that extra fire unit's going to get something, right? Um, and it uh, theoretically, it applies to her as well. I'm not sure, but, you know. Um, so it's not forcing you to fi run all fire, but if you're running her and a fire, um, that could be kind of interesting. So 100% chance of defense break, and it's just that. I think that's the exact same animation for the green one, just the color changed. Um, which I thought was kind of funny. I guess it's a cheap way to get new units out there. After suffering, so this is the thing, this one. So AoE, so if she gets AoE'd and she has a debuff, has 100% chance to counterattack. That's kind of interesting. I don't know if she'll survive, she might just like die from the AoE, but whatever. Where a counterattack with a basic seal is effect only activated once every two turns. Attacks all enemies with blade gusts and increases the speed of the caster for one turn. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's alright. She doesn't have speed scaling, which I just realized. Yeah, no speed scaling, which that would have been nice. So AoE. They're showing her off against this expedition, which I guess theoretically, I mean, that's kind of what she's going to be there for to begin with, right? Like, she's good for this. <laughs> like, good for PvE. And I guess, like... It's good to see that they're making more PvE units. Um, not not like necessarily. This is a low cost kind of like they already have the unit art. They already have the animations and all that stuff. Like, you know, just add a different flavor and then you know you can do whatever you want with them, right? Um, so it's good to see there's more stuff helping people do like more content in that sense, right? It's a little boring for us PvP more PvP centric people, but you know, it's good regardless. Text enemy with a sword, recovering health of the ally with the lowest health unrecovered. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, one of the things is sometimes you just like don't have enough healing on that map. Now, 
if you're just doing all the damage in the world, like, you don't have to worry about it. You just dump all your damage, and then everybody dies, and then you move on, and, like, that's the fastest way to get it over with. Um, oh, yeah, and this is a specialty change. So she's got runes. Uh, health rune increases effectiveness. Okay, so she's got more stats. That's fine. Effectiveness is... Again, she's PvE, so you can... In PvE units, you can uh, you can afford to build some effectiveness on them to, to PvE the unit, because in PvP... Having effectiveness isn't that useful because you, you really need to dump your stats into like damage or health or survivability and stuff like that. So unless they're purely for debuffs, then you run effectiveness. But otherwise, you kind of want to minimize that because you'd rather reallocate those stats. Uh, attack percentage and health is, is fine. She gets a total of 15% health, 15% attack. I'm not sure why. It's funny to me why this one's 555 five, five for a total of 15, and this one's 357 for a total of 15 as well. I don't know why they didn't just do 555 or didn't do 357 here, but, you know, whatever. Um, wedge Rune. Increases critical hit damage of all allies by 5%. That's pretty fun. Uh, dual attack chance, fire allies. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Uh, when ally attacks, it is not their turn. Damage dealt increases. This is pretty interesting. See, like I said, more utility, uh, especially just for PvE. So this is strictly a PvP character. A PvE character. Uh, something I thought I thought was kind of funny because I was going through this and then we're going to go through the runes and the runes usually are like, okay, when using explosive cut, blah, 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 right? And I usually, I always forget, I'm like, okay, when using this skill and I'm like, I don't know what skill it is, I have to go back and look for it, but uh, <laughs> they kept, you know, my stupidity in mind and they, they put this here, they were like, oh, you know, here, here you go. We know you're not going to know which one is which. Uh, so when using her S3, uh, she has a, what, 100% chance to grant increased attack to fire out to all fire allies for two turns. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Um, yeah. So I think. Yeah. I think she's gonna be like invaluable to that expedition and probably something like um, Gollum. Though nobody even farms Gollum, so you know. Uh, one to dispel one buff from the target. Uh, that's again. That's all right. I don't. Does does he get buffed? I don't remember if that tree gets buffed. Or he's not a tree. He's like a tree lich type thing. Damage dealt, okay, uh, increases the amount recovered, so more HP and more damage. So yeah, all in all, not too crazy. Um, not sure how she's going to work. I guess the green one's going to get spec changed into this, or you're going to have a second one? I'm not, you know, who knows. Uh, but again, like I said, most of us have this, like, PvE stuff down anyway. Uh, so let's talk about, like, the real interesting stuff here. Uh, let's see, new episode, specialty change hero, exclusive equipment, so that's the fun part. I don't really care about whatever that is. I think that's that um, side story rerun. We're getting Morty back. More episode stuff. Aiden, we just saw Aiden. That's kind of weird because that means that there's now three fire main characters, right? Like we have Aiden, Mercedes, and um, Raz, which is like, I, what, what was cool to me was like, Oh, hey, you know, Raz is, or uh, Aiden is green, so we have a different element of, like, MC characters, but uh, I guess not. Um, I guess Yuna kind of counts as, like, one of that batch of, like, you know, those characters. And she's water, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so, Dian, Dian's getting exclusive equipment. Um, that's kind of interesting. Uh, that means that, I'm not saying now, and I'm not saying they need it, but somebody, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so... It just means that the possibility of, of SSB getting an, an exclusive equipment one day is um, fast approaching. <laughs> uh, so it gives her more speed, which is good, because you want a fast DN. Um, skill 1. Increases combat readiness of the ally. Oh, this is pretty interesting. It makes her annoying the way... Um, yeah, it makes her annoying the way uh, ML Calric is kind of annoying, because he like boosts up your damage dealers, which is like just irritating. I don't know if that's the best one, but we'll see. Pardon uh, Blessings of the Goddess, Blessings of the Goddess, Barrier Strength, so more Barrier, which is like, it's fine. The Barrier is just kind of nice to have, you don't really want to boost the Barrier more, so I feel like this one, this top one's probably better so far. Uh, increases Combat Readiness of all allies by 15% when using Blessings of the Goddess. Okay, so I think in this situation, either one or two is probably better. Um, <laughs> let's see, if they're buffed, hold on. Uh, okay, so what was I saying? Um... Yeah, so in the first one, they, they get 5% um, boost, but if they're buffed, they get 10%. Um, she does her S2 twice in her rotations, or S1, she does it twice in her rotation, uh, which means it's a total of 20% for one unit in particular. 
It's not too bad. It's not too yeah. It's not too bad. Not too good. However, uh, increases common readiness of all allies fifteen percent. Um, if you want to look at it mathematically, that's fifteen percent times four. That's a grand total of forty five percent. Whereas up here we're only looking at twenty percent for one unit, right? But it it depends on kind of like what teams you like bringing DN into. Um, I use her mainly for PVE stuff, and a lot of times for PVE stuff. Uh, there's like one damage dealer that I'm doing. So if you're doing like Abyss or something, right? You're using Lorena or you're using uh, S10A or using something, right? Where it's like, we just need to boost that one unit up more than the whole team. And this first one might be pretty good for that. Uh, the third one, again, if you're bringing like a whole team of people and they could all use, you know, good CR boost and they're all decently, you know, damage dealy units or whatever, then the S, then the, um, the, the number three one is pretty decent. But um, I think personally, I'm going to go with the first one. Um, yeah, I'm probably just going to go with the first one. Uh, so let's see what, who we have next after that. Uh, Zahak. Zahak better give him more damage, because Zahak's main thing is he does not do enough damage. Um, so more attack percentage, which is good. Increases the attack of the target and the caster for two turns when using elaborate plan. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. I, I like this one so far. Uh, you're not gonna go S2 into S3, but you know you can. You know there's a, there's a chance it's it's decent. So, uh, so these are the S3, the skill three, yeah, the S3 enhancements. So inflicts resource reduction. Uh, resource reduction. This is kind of weird. Again, it goes back to what I was saying. If the S3 is meant to kill someone, like execute them. The fact that you have like resource reduction on them just is kind of like a defeatist mentality. It's like, oh well, the skill the skill is supposed to kill them, but I mean, if it doesn't kill them, well, you get some you get some debuffs on them, and it's just like, why don't you just make it so that the skill that's designed to kill them kills him, right? I don't know. That that's kind of my point in that sense. Um, and again, the, the 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 third one down here reinforces that mentality of like, well, if you didn't kill him the first time, you can you know cycle it faster, and then you can try again the second time. It's just like, just make that skill kill them. I'm not sure what the why it's so hard to do this, right? That's my point. Like, there's so many units out there with like really strong like. I mean, Ramiro has an S3 that can just like do 20k damage to like anybody for free, right? Um, and Zahak, who's designed to only like take out one unit for the sake of dodging or whatever um he can't take out that one unit right like that that's kind of what bothers me about zahak and his whole kit uh none of this really helps that except for the s2 again the decreased skill cooldown is probably useful because again you're gonna miss that kill and you're gonna want to cycle around right um but that's just my thoughts like okay maybe my maybe my zahak is not built as good as everyone else's and maybe theirs is like one shotting whatever who cares um, but the point I want to make is that, like, Zahak doesn't do anything but counter one specific thing. When a unit counters that one specific thing, they should do it with less investment. Because I have, like, there's ten other units I could build that could counter that one specific thing if I put great unit, great, um, pardon, I'm tripping over my words here. There's a, I've got a bunch of other units that can counter that one unit, um, if I give them good gear, right? Like, why would I put a good gear on a unit that does one specific thing when I can put it on someone else who does that job pretty well and does a whole load of other things, right? That's kind of the reason why, like, you know, Rowana was good when she came out. You just dumped whatever gear you put on her, and she did her job, right? And that was it. You didn't have to go, you know, full max gear on her because she counters one unit. The same thing with um, Moonlight Haste, right? She, he counters Revival. You don't got to put your best gear on Moonlight Haste. You just put some gear on him, and he does his job because... His kit counters one type of thing so good that, you know, it's, you know, you don't need to compensate with gear. So that's kind of the point. When a unit is built to counter one thing specifically, you shouldn't have to compensate them with gear. Whereas if they're built to, um, you know, yeah, uh, where other units can do the same thing, but they can just, you know, they need more gear and they need, you know, that better overall application. So this kind of, Zahawk's thing kind of disappoints me, but I'm not really that big. I don't use Zahawk anymore anyway, so it's like whatever. Um, now, Kawazu is pretty fun because we get more attack, which is always a good thing. Uh, Blazing Power increases common readiness of the caster by an original 5%. So he goes from 30 to 35, I think. I think it's 30. Uh, that's pretty good so far. Um, yeah, not bad. Immunity for two turns. Oof, that one... Yeah, I feel like I like the second one better. The second one... Yeah, no, I'm going with the second one because a lot of times people don't run to... Um, they don't run to what's it called? They don't run to, 
two strippers, right? So they'll run the first stripper with the debuffs. His skill goes off, and then now he's pushed up and um, cleansed of buffs. But then their second unit comes in. It doesn't strip, but it puts more debuffs on him. And then that basically that um, cleanse was worthless. Um, so yeah, this just makes it so that like when people s you know s three with somebody cleanses or, or or strip everyone else, and then obviously you don't run immunity on him because you know whatever uh, strips everyone else. He'll cleanse himself, push himself forward, and then uh, put immunity. So whoever comes afterwards isn't going to be able to debuff him anymore, uh, which I think is a pretty good thing. Um, so yeah, so far I'm running the second one. Uh, silence is the target for one turn when using Flames of Destruction. The caster is granted vigor and ignores effect resistance. Again, this looks kind of interesting how like contradictory it is to his design. Like His S3 should kind of just nuke somebody. Um, this S3 is kind of, you're admitting defeat. You're just saying like, Oh, I'm not going to kill them, but I'll, at least I'll put uh, Silence on them, which for one, Silence isn't really that useful. Um, granted, Inferno Kawazu doesn't really, like, nuke people as hard as you might want him to. Um, he does a pretty good job, right? Like, he's not the he's not the best, but, like, really, you want to just nuke someone out. Like, the people you're not going to be able to nuke out are, like, uh, I don't know, what's her name? Like, MLCC or, like, a tank or something. Uh, but you're just here to just one-shot a guy. Like, I'd rather have... I'd rather dedicate his job more towards like turning a fight into a four v four from a four v four to a three to a four v three, rather than like okay, well he'll hit a tank and then silence them from one turn, and keep up this four v four the whole time, right? That's kind of again that's very defeatist in the way that that's set up. So personally, I'm going for S two, um, the the second one. Again, do with that information what you will. Uh, this. Oh yeah, this is that Guild War, like, um, whatever. Uh, is this all dedicated to that? <laughs> Side story with Morty. Uh, wow, it skipped over her. Lilius is here. Uh, Lilius is only good for, uh, Lilius merges. Um, a lot of people don't really use Lilius in high-ranking PvP. Um, I kind of use her just because I like the way she's built. Uh, I like her, her, um, <laughs> I like her kit. Uh, but admittedly, like I said, if I had command, uh, Commander Lilius, I'd probably use her in basically every position. I'm using um, regular Fire Lilius. Um, they don't exactly do the same thing, but they're very similar in the the in, in the way they're built, where they want to be fast, dual attacking with other people, and then give you advantages from their S2. So the S2 it gives you an advantage of like locking somebody down. Lily, uh, Commander Lilius has that there too, right? Um, but the, the only thing that different, the only difference between the two is the S3. So the S3 cleanses, which is kind of like reactionary so you have to wait till they debuff you whereas commander lilius s3 is you know preemptive where it's like we're gonna debuff you and we're gonna do stuff to you and we're gonna give ourselves a boost and all that stuff like the the vigor and all that um so in that sense um like i said between lilius and commander lilius lilius is just basically commander lilius fodder um the bastion of perlusia hasn't been hasn't seen a lot of play in a long time uh, i use it on uh what's his name uh, I know his name. Um, trousers, uh, just because the the buff is the shield is pretty good and the immunity isn't too bad. Um, Politus is decent, I guess. I mean, you, you like no one really wants to make a Politus, but Politus her her S two is so strong, you kind of have to. Uh, Morty's back, which ever since his buff, he's still not very good. He's fun to use. Don't get me wrong, I I enjoyed using him, but he's not very good. The next Mystic rotation, which is on the nineteenth, well. Wow, I feel like this one just came and went, right? I remember everybody complaining about um, Dark Corvus. Oh, no, no, never mind. Never mind. I was thinking this is the, the, the shop, the coin shop. Uh, so, yeah, we're losing... Um, what's her name? So we're losing ML Iceria, ML Tywin, and I think Ball. Yeah, ML Balls and Seasons. Um, we're losing them for these three. Uh, it's not too bad, not too good. Um, like him, nobody cares. Uh, Blood Moon Haste, if you don't have him, I suggest getting him. If it's between these two, I'd probably go with Blood Moon Haste. Um, I, I don't remember last time I used Maid Chloe for anything other than like, okay, I'm going to fight a Crow, and I know Crow's going to like S3 somebody, so I may as well just bring Maid Chloe in, right? Um, or, like, I don't know, if you're fighting like a, a what's her name, um, a Hua Young, and you're like, okay, my grass unit's going to get murdered real quick. Let me just revive him and then continue doing what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, so I'd probably go with Blood Moon Haste. He does more for less investment. Um, Maid Chloe needs a huge amount of investment to be decent. And even then, like, your, your super, like, you know, whale premium Maid Chloe just gets dumpstered on by ML Haste anyway, right? So, 
take that as you will. Uh, so yeah, that'll be that. I mean, I guess there's not a whole lot to, to go over, even though I turned this into 20 minute video somehow. Um, but yeah, hopefully some of this was helpful. Um, I said, if you don't have Blumwood Haste, I'd probably pull for him. Uh, fortunately, I got him from somewhere. I don't remember where, but you know, <laughs> I already have him, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, so until next time, today, today I'm probably going to upload a Guild War video later if the internet uh, is willing. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see ya.